Hey guys, it's Chef from Pressure Luck. Now, I'm gonna make a dish today that is very, very typical in terms of Americana. Uh, really popular in the 50s, and the name can also be kind of a turnoff. I'm talking meatloaf. Now, I love the singer Meatloaf, he's awesome, and I really love Meatloaf in general, but when I was a kid and I ever heard the word, I cringe. It's like something you picture lunch ladies to slop on your plate in the cafeteria, or cafetorium, like my elementary school had. Or like Donna Reed's gonna be serving it to you, or Joan Allen from Pleasantville, you know? But the connotation of Meatloaf is actually superb when done properly, and we're gonna be doing that today. And the best part about Meatloaf is, it takes a little bit of time to cook in the Instant Pot, but it's super, super easy to make, it's just mixing together a bunch of ingredients with some meat, just making a quick little glaze, and if that wasn't enough for you, while the meatloaf is cooking in the Instant Pot, we're also going to be cooking the most unbelievable, creamy, cheesy, garlicky, smoothie, smooth mashed potatoes ever. Guys, we're gonna do this all in one pot, all at the same time. So any negative connotations you had to meatloaf, that all ends right now, because once you try this recipe, you're gonna be see, you're gonna be serving your family a feast of a meal with some of the most tender, juicy, flavorful, melt-in-your-mouth meatloaf ever, as well as the silkiest, creamiest, cheesiest, garlickiest mashed potatoes ever. So let's go right to the Instant Pot and do it two for one. So start out with a large mixing bowl. And to the bowl we want to add in a pound of ground beef and a half a pound of ground pork and a half a pound of ground veal. To me that is the optimal meatloaf mixture. Now if you don't want to use ground veal or ground pork you can just use two pounds of ground beef but make sure you use between 85 to 90 percent lean. Don't go any higher than 90 percent. The leaner the meat the better the meatloaf. Now whatever you do just make sure you use at least one pound of the ground beef in there 85 to 90 percent lean and if you want to do one pound of ground veal or one pound of pork to go with it that's fine. Too. To me, the optimal way, like I said, is one pound of ground beef with a half a pound of ground pork and a half a pound of ground veal. Now let's take a medium-sized yellow onion, and now let's cut off the top and the bottom and peel all the skin away. And now what we want to do is want to grate this very finely. And the best way to do that is with a cheese grater. I would normally snap and do this, but I want to show you how do I do it. I just simply grate it over the cheese grater, and it's going to go right inside of all of our meat. And you see that onions are very watery when you grate them. That's because onions are full of water. That's why when we pressure cook things with onions in them, you'll notice afterwards the onions will have pretty much disappeared and will be a lot more liquid after it cooks. It kind of looks like snow, you see that? All right, now I want to add in a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, a full cup of breadcrumbs, three tablespoons of crushed garlic, one tablespoon of seasoned salt, two teaspoons of black pepper, two teaspoons of dried oregano, two tablespoons of dried parsley, a half a cup of a whole milk, two tablespoons of ketchup, two tablespoons of barbecue sauce, use your favorite one, and two large eggs, oh, slightly beaten. Okay, this is the fun part. With clean hands, we wanna use our hands. Let's mix all this stuff up together real, real good. And that's why you want a nice deep bowl for this, so it allows you plenty of space to mix everything up. Make sure everything gets nice and entwined in here. Oh, this is like therapeutic. Just keep mixing and folding, mixing and folding. And you'll see everything really is gonna start to really stick together beautifully, which is exactly what we want it to do. Ah, it's like massaging, kneading that meat. Knead that meat. And guys, you'll know you're done when everything basically forms into a ball and kind of holds its formation really easily. We're all set. All right, let's just set this down here. And now it is time to put it into its formation. And that is going to be an abundance pan. Okay, this thing is beyond perfect for this meatloaf for a few reasons. Number one, it's gonna look pretty. Look at that, little patterns there. But more importantly, number two, it's gonna cook it really evenly. Too often do I see recipes with a meatloaf where it's in a meatloaf formation, but the center doesn't get fully cooked. This way, because you have this center piece that's kind of almost hollowed out, it's gonna cook super evenly and super perfectly. I'm gonna link where you can get this. This is gonna be perfect for not just the meatloaf, but for things like my stuffing and a whole array of other recipes. Oh, and by the way, my hands are nice and clean now. So now let's take some nonstick spray and really spray the pan. Get the middle portion, get the sides, get it all. And now let's take our meat and now we'll just pack it into the bunt. It's gonna be the perfect amount. Look at this guys, two pounds of meat fits this thing up absolutely perfectly. And there we go, just make sure everything is nice and smoothed out in the top. And here we have our beautiful, fantastic meatloaf right in our bunt. Now we're gonna cover this with some foil and spray the foil and then put it on top of the bunt. And perfection. 
Excellent. There's our meatloaf, all prepared. Very, very easy and very, very quick. Set this aside. And now we're going to focus on our potatoes. I'm using three pounds of potatoes. I'm using one and a half pounds of baby whites and one and a half pounds of baby reds. You can also use Yukon Golds, which are larger. Totally up to you. But I'm actually going to leave the skin on these potatoes. You might want to peel the Yukon Golds. And now I'm just going to cut them in half. And there we go. Actually, I cut them into quarters instead, and I'm putting them right in the Instant Pot and just smooth them out so it's kind of as flat a surface as possible. Let's top it off with five cloves of garlic. And we're gonna add in a cup and a half of chicken broth. I'm using one and a half teaspoons of chicken better than bouillon mixed with one and a half cups of water. And now let's rest the trivet right on top and then leave the little handles down. And then finally, let's rest our bun pan right on top of the trivet. And guys, it's gonna fit in absolutely perfectly. And also prick a little hole for the little middle piece here so air can come through for pressure. All right, let's get that lid on top. Make sure we're in sealing position. And now let's come down to our control panel and hit the pressure cook or manual button, depending on your model. And we wanna cook this for 35 minutes at high pressure. There we go, 35 minutes. Alrighty, so while our meatloaf and potatoes are cooking in the Instant Pot, let's create our incredible meatloaf glaze. We're going to start by adding a half a cup of ketchup, a quarter of a cup of barbecue sauce, one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, you know what I mean, it's so hard to pronounce that, at least for New Yorker anyway, one tablespoon of yellow mustard. Now, this is optional if you really hate mustard, but I'm telling you, you won't even really taste it. It just brings out the flavor of other things in the sauce, believe me. One tablespoon of honey. Just squeeze in about a tablespoon worth. Two packed tablespoons of a light or dark brown sugar. And my little secret ingredient here for this glaze is some balsamic vinegar glaze. Now, this is, can be found in the salad dressing area near the, all the oils in supermarkets. Um, but if you can't find it, I'll link it in the recipe. This is a great thing to have. You don't have to add it, but I think it adds a really nice touch. I'm just going to add one teaspoon of it. And now we're going to mix everything up together in the bowl so everything gets nice and combined. And when we're all nice and smoothed out just like this, we are good. Set this aside. And now that we're done cooking, we're going to do a quick release. And now let's preheat our oven to 400 degrees. And our pin just dropped, so let's take our lid off. And there's our meatloaf just resting in the Instant Pot. Now it's gonna be very steamy and it's gonna be a little tricky getting it out because the perimeter of the bun pan is a little close to that of the liner pot of the Instant Pot. So take some tongs if you can, just get into the corner here and then just kind of lift it. There you go. And then once you have it out, Take some dish towels or something of that nature and then just simply lift it out like that. There you go. And now, look at that, all of our potatoes in the pot. Let's take the trivet right out of there and we'll focus on that in just a second. And now let's go back to our meatloaf and get the tin foil off. And there it is. It might not look so beautiful just yet, but it's going to when we dress it up with that amazing glaze. Now you might notice in your meatloaf that there might be some juices in there. If you look in the corner like that, that's totally normal because it's from all of the fat and stuff from the meat. So what we want to do is you can just drain it over the sink and just do it by like lightly pouring out the sides so you see that all the oil or excess juices just drain out very easy just like that. Just be careful when you're doing this obviously make sure you have a little bit of a security over the meatloaf itself that would be a travesty if it fell into the sink. So let's line a baking sheet with some foil and then spray it with some non-stick spray. And a really good way to make sure that the meatloaf transfers to the baking sheet all in one piece is so by placing the baking sheet upside down on top of the bunt and then using your hands very carefully and very quickly just flip over just like this, and it should all be there in one piece. And if it's a little too hot at the same time, the bun still, just use like a dish towel or, or anything of that nature so you don't burn your fingers. And there is our meatloaf. Perfect, it slid right out of there. It's gonna be very tender and very delicate, so just obviously be careful when you're doing it. Don't do it super spastically, because it's gonna to wanna to maybe fall apart a little bit, but it's okay if it does. And now what we wanna do is we wanna brush that glaze on it. So take a little brush here, and then just brush our amazing glaze all over our meatloaf, gently. And we are looking excellent with our glaze here. It's perfect amount just on top. And if you have some extra, that's fine too. You can obviously dip your meatloaf into it. It's gonna be great that way. And now that my oven's preheated to 400 degrees, I'm just gonna pop this in there for about five to 10 minutes until the glaze caramelizes on top. But keep an eye on it because all ovens vary. All right, so let's turn our attention back to these potatoes and mash them up. You're gonna see right now they're gonna look like they're sitting in liquid, but that's all gonna change real soon with a potato masher. So then take that masher and mash the potatoes to the desired consistency, and you'll see the potatoes are gonna absorb all the liquid very quickly. So now I wanna season these guys up. I'm gonna add in four tablespoons or a half a stick of salted butter, a half a cup of a half and half or a heavy cream, 
And then mix all that up together in the pot so the butter and the cream gets nice and melded into the potatoes. Now here's a little secret ingredient because you guys probably know me by now. If you don't, well, welcome to my world. I'm using one 5.2 ounce little thing of borsin in here. Any flavor will do. I like the garlic and fine herbs. Mix that in with everything. I also want to add in a teaspoon of kosher salt, a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and about a quarter of a cup of chives that I've chopped up. And then stir that in together. And this is going to make the grand finale of mashed potatoes. And look at these rich, creamy, absolutely unbelievable mashed potatoes. Oh, we're in for a real treat here, guys. And it's been about seven minutes since I put my meatloaf in the oven, so let's check on it now. And oh yeah, look at that. Some beautiful caramelization with the glaze on top. We are ready to put this out and just set for a few moments. Now I just transferred it to a plate and some of it might, you know, want to fall apart a little bit or wobble. That's okay if it does, that's fine. You can just put it back into formation. Everyone's cutting into it and eating it anyway, not a big deal. But it still looks pretty and it's gonna have cooked perfectly. So now let's take some of those mashed potatoes and put them right in the middle. This is also why the bunt comes in handy. Look at this, some nice presentation skills here. Mm -mm -mm. Well, there we go. And by the way, we still have tons of mashed potatoes left. But you know what? We are ready to serve. So let's cut a piece and try it out. And to those who would like to see up close and personal, look at this, guys. Perfectly cooked throughout, just perfect, and it's going to be so tender and so juicy. Look at this. Mmm, beautiful, beautiful. Absolutely perfectly cooked. All right, guys, here's some meatloaf and here's some mashed potatoes, and let's try it out. Oh, boy. Let's try the meatloaf first. You know, back when you first hear of meatloaf, when you're a kid, you're like, meatloaf? Ew. I mean, the word isn't that appealing setting. Meatloaf. But I understand why everybody loves this so much. When this is done right, which my opinion this is, the flavor is unbelievable. It's like a burst of like, mm. It's just so tender, and it's just full of wonderful, wonderful spices. You can taste the cheese in there, you can taste the barbecue sauce, you can just taste everything that's, everything good. It's like a truly premium, premium meatloaf, and it's home cooking at its finest. Mmm. All right, let me try the mashed potatoes now. I'm excited for these. Oh boy, look at these guys. Oh, those are some seriously, seriously creamy, smooth, fluffy, perfect, outrageous mashed potatoes. I get that borsin in there. It's just scrumptious. It's just scrumptious. The whole thing. Mm. The glaze over the meatloaf. Top notch. You know, this is one of those dishes where the whole family congregates together, has some meatloaf, and just loves life. It's almost like having a, an incredible burger almost, but without the bun. Instead of the bun carbs, you have the carbs for the potatoes, you know? But this is a winning meatloaf, and it has all the elements to make it everything just come together perfectly. It has so much flavor, it's so juicy, and it's absolutely anything but boring. Richard, try it. My hair is like... All right, so let's see what this guy thinks of it. I know it's gonna be good. Oh yeah, do you? Mmm. Meatloaf is sweet and savory at the same time. The good. potatoes are... They're smoky a little bit, a little cheesy, buttery. You got those chives in them, they're very good. They're like uh, a little chunky. The potato skins are still on there. So. Those skins are on there, yeah. I'm sweating very much right now in this kitchen because I had the oven on. It's still kind of summery, so you have to bear with me. It's just hot in here. And look at these mashed potatoes. I just want to like eat it off the serving spoon, but I'm not going to do that. I guess I could, it's just us. And there you have it, guys. An absolutely beautiful, glistening, tender, juicy, full of flavor meatloaf that hopefully it won't spoil you for all other meatloafs because I don't want your mothers to get mad at me, but it really is divine. It's truly phenomenal. If you make that meatloaf for your family, I guarantee you it'll be gobbled up. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want more videos or more recipes in general, go to PressureLuckCooking.com because I have so many recipes there and it's really easy to find anything from healthy to comfort, from vegan to carnivore. There's everything there. Healthy food recipes as well. Go to uh, Facebook.com slash PressureLuckCooking and like my Facebook page because, you know, it just keeps growing. People like watching the content there. There's a lot of helpful things. Anytime a new recipe comes out, you'll know. Sales on items, tips, you name it, it's there. And of course, at Pressure Luck, subscribe to me on YouTube where all my videos live. Very easy to find. And also for Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Pinterest. Don't forget Pinterest. Pin any recipe you want from my website onto any board and share it out. Thank you so much, guys. And like a bat out of hell, I have more meatloaf to eat. Delicious.